All right, so let's go ahead and get started with Article 1. This is a topic that's coming out of MIT's Mechanical Engineering Department by Professor Ming Guo. So I'm, I'm actually going to give you the story of this because I just think it's fascinating. Hit so, me with it. I, I'm going to hit you with it. So Professor Guo had a visiting scholar, and the visiting scholar had never had lobster before. So it was like, let's go out to dinner. While they're having dinner, the scholar is asking about this, like, you know when you're eating lobster or really any crustacean, you have the exoskeleton, the hard parts that are connected together with some sort of membrane. So he was asking about yeah. why they can't chew through that membrane. And I guess, you know, it piqued their interest and they're like, let's go study in the lab like any good engineer or scientist would do. That's something that we would totally do. And while looking at it, they realized some very, very interesting things. Um, I'm going to hit you with some numbers real quick. They okay. cut up this membrane. They put it into an oven to see what it was made out of. And turns out it's like 90% water. So it's a hydrogel. And the rest of it is this like small little fibers called, I think, chitin, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And yeah, they did some more tests with it. Like they wanted to understand its mechanical properties. So they were stretching it and they noticed that it can stretch to tw twice its original length without snapping. But once it reaches that point, it stiffens up. And with the comparisons they did, they found out that this is actually the toughest of all known natural hydrogels. So that's like collagen, animal skin, and natural rubber. So they've got this dope membrane that they found on lobsters. They did some tests. What was the next step? Did they try to reverse engineer it? Or are they going to end up harvesting a bunch of these membranes from lobsters to do anything useful with them? Thankfully for the lobsters, the idea is to reverse engineer it. So they, okay, they cool. actually um, looked at this under the microscope and they realized something interesting was that these fibers weren't just randomly dispersed throughout this hydrogel membrane it was actually oriented at exactly 36 degrees offset layer after layer hmm. and that is what what they reproduced to kind of compare like with, with some other tests they did a they did a ballistic test where they took a five millimeter steel ball i think shot it at like 200 millimeters no 200 meters a second and they noticed that you would need about 13 millimeter thick material of this membrane to stop the bullet and in comparison to kevlar you only need one millimeter but in the other mechanical taste they did this thing was beating kevlar in every category so that kind of leads me to my next question which is like where are they using this thing are they planning on making body armor out of it are there other uses like what's going on you hit the nail on the head body armor is the main one they talked about so this thing is not only strong, but it's also flexible, right? And it kind of makes sense when you think about a lobster. They need to make these really, really rapid movements with their, you know, tails and stuff. If they're escaping from zone, if, so, if they're just walking away. But the underbelly is also exposed to, like, the ocean floor where there's rocks and stuff that can scratch them. So they want to take that and give the flexibility but the strength to someone that is going to be, you know, in an environment where they're going to have a lot of impact coming at them. And I, I think... The military is the one they talked about, but I think this also has a home in the sports realm. So I think like the NFL, hockey, basically any contact yeah. sport. Yeah, I mean like being able to have pads that aren't so rigid and like made of these composites or of plastic. Like if it's made of a flexible gel, but it still provides the same impact resistance, I bet that'd be a huge plus for a lot of athletes, uh, also in the military. And I also was doing a little bit of research on this, and I think that they are planning on using it to make artificial tissue, which makes sense because it's inspired by actual animal tissue. Right. But maybe for more ballistics testing or uh, maybe some medical applications, it'd be cool to see if they can mass produce this to make something that's, you know, really, really close in consistency and material strength to testing on skin as well. And like... I guess some of the more boring applications, they did mention that this thing is almost as strong as like synthetic uh, rubbers. So like what we use for our tires or conveyor belts. So it could maybe have a home there. Like, again, it's not as hot of an application as body armor or synthetic tissue, but this does sound pretty cool. No, I agree. And I, I really like, you know, we've kind of hit this theme in a few episodes of our podcast so far, but I really like when... You know, we go back to nature to get inspiration for science. I think it's uh, it's an interesting principle, and they've applied it well here. There's like a word for that, like bio biomimicry, right? Yeah, biomimicry. So yeah. this is an an awesome use of biomimicry, um, and 
really shout out to these folks at MIT for cracking the code on how to make lobster chain mail, basically. So we should go out for dinner more often to get inspired like them. That, that's my yeah, mind. Yeah, by lobster. Yeah.